Hi, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and this is MedPix Case of the Week number 686, a woman with oligomenorrhea and alacteria. We have no significant financial disclosures or conflicts to report. This case was contributed by Yanis Vasilio Papagiorgiou from Greece. The patient is a 33-year-old woman who has menstrual cycle abnormalities and galacteria. So this is basically a case of oligomenorrhea and galacteria. The first question is whether the woman is pregnant. So a pregnancy test was ordered and it was negative. But a serum prolactin was remarkably elevated at more than 1,005 nanograms per milliliter. Serum prolactin is normally about 0 to 20. During pregnancy, it may rise to slightly less than 500. A stalk effect from a supracellar tumor usually produces an elevation of prolactin in a range from 100 to 200. Prolactin levels greater than 200 are generally associated with hormonally active prolactin secreting tumors or prolactinomas. If the patient has visual symptoms, they typically have a macroadenoma that has grown out of the pituitary fossa and is compressing the optic chiasm. If they have galacteria, that's almost always going to be a sign that the patient also has a prolactin secreting tumor, but it might be a microadenoma for which a specialized MR exam is required, dynamic enhanced MRI. The pituitary gland is about the size of a dime and it is located in the sphenoid bone and it is directly related to the cistern above which is the supracellar cistern. If we look at the coronal image in this patient after contrast is given, we can see an area of decreased enhancement involving the left side of the gland. We can also see in the sagittal image that there is a small area of decreased enhancement in the posterior portion of the pituitary gland. These findings are consistent with the pituitary microadenoma. Pituitary adenomas are typically classified as being macroadenomas, which are going to be larger than 10 millimeters and expand and balloon the size of the pituitary fossa and may compress the chiasm. Or the patient may have a microadenoma, and these are defined as less than 10 millimeters, oftentimes completely contained within a normal diameter pituitary gland. If we can look at this mag view, we can see that there is an area, again, of decreased enhancement in the posterior portion of the pituitary gland. Typically, patients with microadenoma will present for attention because of endocrine symptomatology and not visual symptomatology. So again, in this patient, the primary findings are an area of decreased contrast enhancement in the left and posterior portion of the pituitary gland. Normally, when we're looking for a microadenoma, we do dynamic MR imaging. If we look at this coronal non-contrast scan, we can see the flow voids from the internal carotid artery, and we can see the optic tracts in the supracellar cistern. A bolus of gadolinium is injected, and we image the patient every 10, 10 to 15 seconds for 3 to 6 slices. The normal pituitary gland reaches a maximum intensity of enhancement 30 to 60 seconds after contrast infusion. However, a pituitary adenoma typically enhances later and also has delayed washout. The adenoma may enhance to maximum intensity anywhere between 60 and 200 seconds after contrast infusion. This is a different patient, but this individual also shows a pituitary microadenoma as an area of decreased enhancement in the left-hand portion of the gland. This appearance of delayed enhancement in a microadenoma is often described as a flip-flop of the adenoma signal. So this is the patient that had a pituitary microadenoma confirmed by imaging. There are many causes of elevated prolactin, including the stalk effect and drugs. Some of the drugs that cause an elevation of prolactin include antidepressants and phenothiazines. The treatment of prolactinomas is typically medical with bromocryptin, which normalizes the prolactin levels in almost 90% of patients. And in about 80% of patients, it will shrink the size of a macroadenoma by approximately 25%. Bromocryptin is contraindicated in patients taking antipsychotic medications. Transphenoidal or transeptal surgery is indicated when we have a macroadenoma, when there are visual symptoms, when the patient has a craniopharyngioma causing elevated prolactin levels because of the stalk effect. But it w may not work in every patient. This has been Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and I thank you for your kind attention.